Welcome everyone to Legal Thinking from RWK Goodman with me, Ed Wooten. And me, Liam Pep. So Liam, um, you know the phrase, build back better? Yes, is, is, is that one of the government's three word bish bash bosh slogans? Yeah, you know, get Brexit done, all that kind of stuff. Well, you've been having a chat with a, a couple of people about the potential inability to build back better because of uh, labour shortages, is that right? I have indeed. So one of the points that was made was it's all very well and good for both governments and people who work in the private sector to promise big things like new housing developments. I think it's the government who said that they want to build 300,000 new houses every year. And I mean, we know that so far they've fallen short on this target. But in this podcast, we point out that these promises, a lot of the problem is um, that there simply aren't enough people in the industry to build them. So who have you, uh, who did you who did you speak to about this then? So in this episode, we speak to Olivia Mori, or Libby, who is a project manager at the Corvus Group and who is very passionate about the labour shortage in the construction industry. And we also speak to Elizabeth Painter, who is an associate solicitor at RWK Goodman with a speciality in construction and engineering. Great. Sounds like it was a really insightful and uh, interesting conversation. So let's roll tape. Livy and Lizzie, thank you very much for joining us. Um, So just to start off, can you give us a general overview of the extent of the labour shortage and to what extent is it um, kind of unique to the construction sector? Because, I mean, if you speak to people in hospitality, if you speak to people in retail, if you speak to people across a whole bunch of sectors right now, there is a shortage. Um, Lizzie, should we come to you first? Yeah, sure. So... um The labour shortage in the construction industry has been uh, worsening for years. So it's been very kind of well known that it's about, uh, there's a lot of statistics that almost half um, of personnel in in the construction industry are aged between 45 and 65. So that's kind of bringing in this gap where in, you know, 20 years time, suddenly half half the people aren't there anymore, which um, is quite staggering and is potentially how it's different from other industries like hospitality. Um, and yeah, basically statistics gradually for kind of the last however many years or so have just been showing that there's more job vacancies, but there's less applicants. So that's kind of, it's just, it's it's kind of reaching a point at the moment where we've got the twin disruptors of COVID and Brexit and obviously the wars and stuff on top that just is making it an industry at the moment that is desperately trying to um, deal with this labour uh, shortage as quickly as possible. And does this shortage impact the whole industry or is it specific roles and professions? Um, so it's yeah, it's the whole industry to be honest. Um, I think Livy might be able to answer that a bit better in terms of her research, but it's it's very much so. It's uh, skilled workers. It's um, everything in between. It's all of the kind of professions. Uh, w- when you speak to people about the construction industry of a school age, they think immediately things like architects and stuff. Who mm-hmm. there is kind of a clear recruitment uh, route for in terms of going to university, um, but the other roles that are you know fun fundamentally important to how a construction project works on site, there isn't as much of a clear cut route. And so, you know, they're both being impacted by uh, schools and stuff, not necessarily being aware of the roles and sending kids uh, to pursue a career, basically. But yeah, I think Livy's got some good thoughts on that. Yeah, just to, I mean, echo a lot of the the thoughts that you've already mentioned, but um, so I carried out some research uh, into this topic um, and did quite a lot of secondary research and there's so much literature out there on the skills shortage. Um, One of the the facts that stuck with me is the Construction Industry Training Board has forecasted that an additional 216,000 workers will be required in the UK over the next five years. Um, I think one of the things, Lizzie, you said is, is it's also the problem is the fact that there's an aging workforce and there's not enough young skilled talent coming in so that's the the key issue and the skill shortages is is one of the biggest challenges facing the industry um particularly the recruitment of young young skilled workers um and just touching on whether it affects certain roles over others again i would agree with lizzie that i don't think it it does. I think it's it's pretty much across the board that we have this this issue. And do you think that there's certain perceptions of the construction industry that are putting young people off? Yeah, I would definitely 
again, one of the, the things that I, I found out from my research, I think there are two key issues. So it's the, firstly, it's the, the lack of awareness that people have of the jobs available in the industry. Mm-hmm. And also, like you say, it's, it's the perception. So um, negative perceptions that the people have of working in the industry. So firstly, a lot of people aren't aware of the jobs that there are and the progression that is available in the industry. Um, but also, yeah, there's lots of lots of misconceptions about construction, about diversity, that it's a male-dominated industry, um, and also that a lot of the jobs are site-based, which obviously they are, but there's so many jobs in offices that I think a lot of young people aren't aware of. So it's just getting that getting that awareness um, out there so people can consider those roles as well as site-based roles. Yeah, and just to add to that, it's also kind of the, um, in terms of the roles that are available, it's it's more than, I guess, the the, the standard stuff that we think of. There's a lot of, um, it's a very, very modern industry, which I think is one of the key perceptions that perhaps isn't being uh, passed down to students and kids and parents and stuff because you know it's got all the kind of state of art uh, state of the art technologies such as like imaging drones uh, you know it uses 3d printing and uh, in terms of site stuff there's hydrogen driven uh, jcbs um, and you also kind of get to be part of delivering a, uh, a sustainable future so the industry, you know, is responsible on a kind of negative note about um, 40% of, I think it's 40% of the global carbon emissions. And so if you can be part of that industry and make change and make it more sustainable and make it more green, which is something that should be, you know, really attractive to people, especially of the younger generations, where it's um, climate change and stuff is, you know, we're all very aware of it. Then you basically, by joining the industry, you'd get to be part of kind of delivering this uh, sustainable future. And I think that's one of the, yeah, that, that perception just really isn't being passed down for, you know, for whatever reason it is. And that's kind of a key issue that links into this whole labor shortage scenario. Maybe it's a bit of an obvious question, but why is it important to address the labor shortage? I guess like the, the the main thing is in terms of delivering projects. So, um, you know, you think of construction is everywhere in, in society. It's kind of impacts on everything we do. It's in our infrastructure with our roads. It's, you know, it's our buildings, it's our homes, it's our commercial uh, properties in terms of um, offices and then also manufacturing in terms of goods. And it's kind of, Uh, absolutely everywhere as well with like community projects and so if we don't have the workforce to deliver these projects whether that's people you know physically on site people managing them uh, people applying for funding for them um, all the other kind of professionals who are involved you know surveyors etc if if those people aren't involved in a project then it it, quite frankly it won't go ahead (laughs) And we are faced with, you know, there's a housing crisis at the moment where housing prices are going up and the government's trying to pledge however many um, affordable homes per year. But the the kind of the, the scary fact is that who's going to build them? You, you know, you can pledge 100,000 here, 100,000 there. But if we don't have an industry who's kind of propped up with all the professionals and experts and workers that it needs, those kind of projects are never going to get delivered. So is the labour shortage um, also a gender issue? So, yeah, definitely yes, to a certain extent. Um, so out of the uh, proportion of con- construction industry professionals, women currently only make up 14%, which is obviously a lot lower than you would expect 50% or, you know, mm-hmm. or, more, or at least around that figure, 14, 1, 4% is kind of uh, not representative of the gender split in the UK at the moment. Yeah, and just just to add to that, um, so in the in the research I carried out, I did a questionnaire on on young people aged sixteen to twenty five, and um, I broke my results down by gender, um, and that it quite clearly showed that a larger proportion of female respondents had never considered a career in construction. Um, so yeah, it highlighted a difference between um, male and female perception and, and awareness of construction, um, and that also aligned with a lot of secondary research I'd done that. Um, sort of yeah 
highlighted that women potentially are less attracted to working construction than men. So yeah, I think there definitely is, that's another issue that we need to address. And how is the labour shortage being prioritised by best practice groups like Constructing Excellence? And, and a bit more widely, can you explain a little bit more about the work that Constructing Excellence and G4C does? Yeah, sure. So Constructing Excellence is a uh, non-for-profit organisation um, that uh, functions across the whole of UK and it's split into regions. So uh, me and Livia are in the Southwest region and it basically promotes best practice. It's all about collaboration. It's all about construction professionals coming together and trying to kind of fix all the key issues that are going on um, at the moment. So one of the big ones that they work towards is uh, things like creating a sustainable future and how, you know, someone will share knowledge about, oh, if you use this product, it will, you know, reduce your carbon footprint or your um, embodied carbon count by whatever amount. Um, you also have a part of it where they're looking at all the building safety stuff. So with Grenfell and there's lots of key stakeholders and they lobby government and they suggest, you know, maybe you should be doing this instead. These kind of tests, these kind of people would be the most appropriate to um, assess a building at each stage of its construction and its conception. And then the other aspect of what Constructing Excellence is uh, focusing on at the moment is um, G4C, which is Generation for Change, which me and Livia a part of and their future skills kind of uh, think uh, theme group, which are looking at the labour shortage and basically how we can change perceptions of the industry, how we can encourage um, schools and students to take a construction career seriously. And yeah, so that's that's kind of constructing excellence and what we're part of in a, in a nutshell. Libby, we alluded to it earlier, but you've recently finished a report that looks at how to attract uh, young people to the industry, or not even just young people, but people in general. Uh, what were some of the uh, outcomes of that report? I think um, uh, going off sort of what I touched on earlier in terms of awareness that that's what I took from my re research is that raising awareness of, of the mm -hmm. opportunities that we've talked about is one of the, the key elements. So all the things that G4C and Constructing Excellence, Excellence are doing in terms of sort of raising the profile of, of jobs in the industry. So, um, you know, the, po the podcast that we're doing help to show young people what jobs are out there. Because I think... Well, what's the name of that plug your podcast? Um, it's the, um, it's the, it's the generation for change, uh, podcast that we do monthly. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, you know, each, each month we interview, interview someone who has a different role. So you get to find out what those, what, what that role involves. I think that's one of the key issues is, is the, is the awareness. And then the other issue again, which we've touched on is the perception. So it's anything in terms of what we can do is, is anything that we can do to, to, change any negative perceptions and um, I guess showcase what the benefits of working construction are um, of which there are there are many. And what else has been done by existing initiatives such as Go Construct, the Building Greater Exeter or the Building Greater Plymouth, Bristol groups, um, for example stuff like Battle of the Builds in Exeter um, and Building a Better Tomorrow campaign? To start with um, Go Construct is a great um, a great resource. Um, so it's got it's got lots of resources um, to give young people information about about careers in construction. Um, so it's yeah, it's a great website. Um, and then in terms of other existing initiatives, so I'm taking part in an event called Battle of the Builds, which is where lots of schools come together and six people, including myself, are presenting a construction project. Um, talking about uh, heritage aspects and sustainability. And then the students have to vote on which project they think is well, the best um, and meets those those set criteria. Mm -hmm. um, so that sort of thing of, of engaging with young people and getting them involved in um, finding out about construction projects. Um, and then another another initiative is a, is a campaign that's just um, just been released, which is um, uh, Building Greater Exeter and Build Tor Bay have come together to, to do a campaign which is called Build a Better Tomorrow. And again, it's a it's a campaign that shows the range of roles in the industry. Um, it has lots of different roles within the video, and it's just to yeah show show young people how working construction can be can be really exciting and it can be really re rewarding as well. 
Um, yeah. So the, the the kind of point with this is that there, there's there's the industry is taking a very kind of piecemeal approach at the moment to how to deal with the this kind of labour shortage uh, and the this kind of crisis that we're going through. And this is when there's lots of different bits going on. So as Livy's alluded to, Go Construct have a very helpful website that has resources and kind of points people in the right direction of, you know, if you want to go down an apprentice route, uh, what, what do you need to do? What, what, you know, what courses do you need to take? Um, and where will that lead you in the future? Which is really helpful to have. But the, the kind of problem we have at the moment is that people aren't necessarily being, uh, I guess, guided towards it. Um, and so that's a lot of what kind of leading back into what we're doing with constructing excellence and uh, generation for change is that we're not trying to kind of add to all the stuff that's already out there. Mm -hmm. We're more trying to be the the glue that people can come to as kind of a first point of call. And, you know, we're making lots of contacts across the Southwest and then we can guide people to the best um, places for them to find the information. So they can go to go construct, you know, find X, Y, and Z. They can go to this um, build a better tomorrow campaign to um, see about the different roles available. They can listen to our podcast, also hear about the different roles available, but um, it's very much so we want to support a lot of events that are already kind of going on and, and help people get basically help people get into schools and help them talk about a lot of the stuff that's that's already out there. Excellent. Libby and Lizzie, thank you very much for your time. No problem. Thanks, Liam. Thank you. So, yeah, it's, it's obviously Libby um, has done some uh, really fascinating research into this issue. Um, and, you know, Lizzie really knows her stuff as well. Um, what did you what did you take away from that chat, Liam? Um, well, I suppose the thing about the gender statistics and both the lack of women currently in the construction industry and the lack of young people who are female who um, uh, kind of know about the opportunities being low um is is not surprising um mm. it, it's mm. just <laughs> not surprising sorry it's disappointing but not surprising yeah of course i mean it's it's an issue that faces anywhere in employment i suppose so yeah sad that it's not not surprising really yeah. it's also the same here and, um, and Libby and Lizzie and the other organisations and groups and people who we spoke about in the interview I think will really have their work cut out um, to change that substantially um, in the near future yeah. okay well if you want to find out more about our construction expertise make sure to go to our website at rwkgoodman.com you may also not be aware but um, to those listening it might be of interest um, our new corporate campaign on mergers and acquisitions um, is launching today called Transactional Tension um, um, so make sure to check out our uh, social media if you found us on social media uh, to uh, read that report um, and yeah, get, give it a like, give us some comments, tell us what you think. Um, and yeah. if you enjoyed this podcast, do subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts, um, including YouTube, we're up on there. Um, and do also leave us a five star review that helps with other people finding us and the algorithms and all that stuff. Those darn algorithms. Thanks for listening. Thank you for listening.